Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Buiga Adideji, and I'm so glad to welcome you today to this week's edition of Leader View. I hope your week has been great. We bless God. And I believe also that you have been blessed uh, in the series that we began some weeks ago, the leadership trip to Genesis. I believe you've been learning some things, and your leadership has been growing. I'm so excited about that. Today, we are going to continue in the same series, the leadership trip to Genesis, and we're looking at something that is very crucial for our effectiveness in leadership. Today, we want to look at, very quickly at perfect leadership in an imperfect world. Perfect leadership in an imperfect world. And I want us to begin the discussion from the book of Genesis chapter 6. And very quickly, we will learn some lessons there. And as we look at other scriptures, uh, we gain more light and we become better as leaders. Don't forget, we are looking at perfect leadership in an imperfect world. Let's quickly go to Genesis chapter 6. Now, I will quickly read from verse 1. The Bible says, Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the head, <clears throat> and daughters were born to death, that the sons of God <clears throat> saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not thrive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. I'm sure some of us have read this scripture quite a number of times, but our focus isn't on these three verses, but we are beginning with it. <coughs> now, one of the things that we saw is that the Bible says, as men were increasing on the head, it got to a time the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they chose, they took for themselves wives as they as as they felt okay. And let's quickly go to verse 5 so that we see the consequence of that action or that event. Verse 5, the Bible says that the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the heads. And that every intent of the thought of his earth, of his heart, was only evil continually. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the head, and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the head, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created. From the face of the head, both man and the beast, creeping thing and best of the hair. For I am sorry that I have made them. And the Bible concludes in verse 8 with, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, there was a time in the, in the history of mankind that the entire earth was filled with creatures, men and women and beasts that were perpetuating evil, they were so corrupt that God couldn't behold their iniquity. God couldn't behold their corruption. They became a source of concern to God. I don't know if that incident that took place then is looking like what is happening in your country or your city right now. I, have, you, have you looked around where you live and you discovered that it looks as if there is, there is nobody that is thinking straight, that is thinking right. Does it happen to you like that? And in case if it has never occurred to you like that, in case you have never seen anything of such, I want you to understand that it is real. It is a reality. <clears throat> now, I want us to also look at the word man. Based on our understanding from Genesis chapter 1 about what man and who man is. In Genesis 1.26, God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion over. And he now gave a, 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 a three-dimensional uh, layer or uh, a sphere of dominion for man. 
dominion in the air, dominion on the ground, dominion over everything. So man had dominion, and the essence of the dominion was that man could replicate the will of God on the earth. Man could please God on the earth. Man could ensure that the earth continually remained pleasing to God, the one who created the earth. And so for man to function like that, the spirit of man was released into man. And Bible says God made man in his own image and according to his likeness. So the image of God, the likeness of God became the, the requirement for the making of man. And so man was a creature that carried the spirit of God all around the space and all around the places he went to. And so as a vessel, as a bearer of God's spirit, he was therefore qualified to enforce the will of God in the places that he finds himself. Now, one of the things that God noted in verse 3 is that Genesis 6, 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. <clears throat> Don't forget this incidence of for he is indeed flesh came after the fall of man. Because man fell from grace, the nature of God the capacity that was inherent in God that was made available to man was, was, was removed. And the, if I would say, the last part of it, God himself, the entire essence of God that was in man, God said he couldn't allow that essence of himself to continue to strive with man. Because the intent of his heart is evil continually. Now, you understand that what God created at the beginning wasn't just a flesh. God created a leading, a leading vessel. God created a leader. God created man who could enforce his will. Man who could rule. Man who could reign in his behalf. So man began as a leader. A man became a leader because the spirit of God was in him. And so when the spirit of God couldn't remain a man, the man couldn't sustain his leadership. In verse 8 that we just read, in spite of the corruption and the evil everywhere, the Bible says God found, I mean, God found a man called Noah, and the man was pleasing to him. And let's see verse 9. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a, a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Verse 12, so God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the head. Now, it appears to me that even though a generation <coughs> could be corrupt, even though a generation could be filled with evil, it is possible for a man to stand out. It is possible for a man to be identified with the will of God in a corrupt generation, in a corrupt society. In a corrupt organization, it is possible for a man to stand for God. Now, when you stand for God, do you stand for God as a non-entity or do you stand for God as an entity? Now, when you stand for God, you stand for God in reality as an entity that cannot be messed around with by anyone, no, by no authority and by no persons. You stand for God and you establish your authority on the earth. So it's important that we understand that even when the crowd is missing it, when the entire nation is missing it, it's possible for you not to miss it. It is possible for you to stand out from the group or from the crowd of your family and from the crowd of your nation. In your political party, even though everybody is thinking, how do we steal? How do we corrupt? How do we sustain our dynasty via corruption? It's possible for you to stand out. You see, your leadership 
whether it will go beyond year and whether it will go beyond now is going to be dependent on how <laughs> true you are to your God. Bible says, let the Lord be true and every man a liar. Now, what do you think becomes of those who are liars? What do you think, think becomes of those who have been identified by God as a corrupt and a evil people? See what God said. In that verse 7, Genesis 6, 7, it says, So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the head. Now, it's possible for God to raise you up as a leader. It's possible for God to place you in positions of responsibility, of authority, of influence, of relevance in your generation. But if you refuse to be identified with his will, if you refuse to stand with him and you choose to stand with the rest, you will be destroyed with the rest. You will go into extinction with the rest. Do you know quite a number of people have risen up in generations and have become, they, be, they, they became great men and women. But you and I cannot remember them today. The reason is because they've been wiped out from the history. And I want us to quickly go to the book of Daniel chapter 2 so that we understand that it's possible for a man who emerges as a leader due to his degree of compromise, his level of corruption, his level of evil, to be, to be wiped off the history book of mankind. Daniel chapter 2, and I will read few verses. Now, I want to read verse 6 and verse 9. In verse 6, the Bible says, However, Nebuchadnezzar speaking here, says, However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. See what is speaking, spoken in verse 9. If you do not make known the dream to me, there is only one decree for you. For you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the time has changed Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can give me its interpretation. This is a generation. A generation where the king had a dream, but he couldn't remember the dream, and he didn't know the interpretation. And, but yet, he was troubled. And so, he called all the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians of the old kingdom, those who know times and seasons, he called them together. He says, I had a dream. Give me the interpretation. And they said, oh, king, no one can tell you the interpretation of this dream because you are not even telling us the, inter the dream. How can we interpret it for you? But the, the king said, I know that you have all agreed. And note that word, you have all agreed to speak lying words, to speak lying and corrupt words, they came together agreeing to deceive the king. Now, is it that this matter happened in that time and is no more existing now? No. It is happening now. Many people are lying to people in power. Many people are speaking corrupt words to them. Many people are deceiving them so that they continue to manipulate them and continue to use them to afflict the people. But see a wise king. He said, no, I know you all. You are my ministers my special advisors you have all agreed to speak lying words to me he knew he was in a, an imperfect world and yet he remembered he became conscious of the fact that he needed to stand out from the imperfection that he was surrounded with i want us to also see something now Eventually, Daniel was contacted and he, he prayed to God and God gave him an answer. See how he, uh, see the dream, a portion of that dream from verse 34. Daniel chapter 2 verse 34, the Bible says, You watched while a stone was cut out without ends, which struck the image on its feet. 
of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together. Now, one of the things that you must understand is that the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold, they represent kingdoms, they represent governments, they represent authorities and powers. And the Bible says they were all crushed together and became like the chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now, if you jump to verse 44, you will understand this more. Now, verse 44 says, And in the days of these kings, gold, silver, bronze, iron, and clay, in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom, a government, which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now, you must understand that it is one thing for you to be a leader now. It's another thing for you to sustain your leadership. These kingdoms, because of their corruption and their evil, the God of heaven set up, decided to set up a kingdom that crushed, that uh, scattered these kingdoms to the point that their history are nowhere to be found. Now, don't you know it's also possible for you, even though you are, a, you are an emerging leader in your community, for your history to be wiped out from that same community? However, it is also possible for you, because of your tendency to do the right thing because of your your uh, intentions to do the will of God, it's possible for you to be made in leadership for a long time. And it's possible for you to even continue to lead even when you are no more alive. And I want us to see something in 2 Chronicles as I'm rounding off. 2 Chronicles chapter 16 I will read verse 9. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. Now the Bible says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. And let me pause there. The eyes of the Lord is running to and fro the head. The Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 4, verse 17, that it is God that rules in the affairs of men. He rules in the kingdoms of men. And he does it through you and I. However, it requires that we become loyal to him. The Bible says his eyes is running to and fro the head looking for those who are loyal to him. People that he will show himself strong in their behalf. God is able to show himself strong in your leadership. God is able to help you. God is able to use you. But you must be loyal to God. You must seek to do His will. The Bible says in that Genesis chapter 6 that we read that Noah found favor in the eyes of God. And if I may read the, the, the verse 9, again it says, this is the genealogy, genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. This is to show a man who was loyal to God. Every other person were loyal to other things. Every other person were committed to other things. But Noah chose to be loyal to God and to be committed to, the, to God to the extent that he decided to walk continuously with God. Whom are you working with? Whom are you siding with at such a time as this? Is the, is the darkness around you overwhelming you to the point that you choose to love darkness more than light? Are you so much used to corruption in your office that you've come, you, have, you have finally concluded that it's better to join, to join them if you cannot beat them? It's important to understand these things. You can be the perfect leader in an imperfect world. You can be that perfect leader in an imperfect society. It's important to understand that the key to becoming perfect in an imperfect setting is to work with the perfect God. 
you must choose God at such a time as this. You must partner with him. You must work with him. When others are following money, when others are following ambition, when others are following different things, following their ego, you must choose God and you must follow God. That is the way for you to continue to remain when others are being destroyed. That is the word that has been laid in my heart very short. But I believe that when you meditate in these words, you are able to glean more things and you are able to learn more lessons. It's important to understand that God is counting on you. 100 people are in a room. 90 people are corrupt. God is counting on the 10. You could just be one of those 10 people. Decide to stand with God. Decide to stand for God. It could look as if the darkness is so large, so big. But don't forget, one with God is a majority. One with God is a majority. If you choose God now, you become a majority and you will be preserved by God and the leadership that is going to emerge in this new dispensation is going to be entrusted unto you. You see, God is set to wipe off the hold men, the hold generation, the hold leaders, the hold politicians, corrupting and lying to the people. It's important you understand that if you join them now, you will be wiped off with them. God is raising a new generation of leaders in Nigeria, for instance. If you join them, you will be wiped off with them. God is replacing the hold with the new. You could be one of the new people. Can God trust you? Can God trust you? Can God trust you? Can God count you worthy in an unworthy world? Can God trust you with power in a power-drunk society? It's important you settle this matter with God. It's important you realize if you choose God, you could appear to be lonely, but you are the majority. In time, you will realize that when all others are going, you are standing. That is the word. Remain blessed. Meditate on these words. Profit with these words. Trade with these words. Make sure you, you, you transact with this word. And I see your leadership becoming better in Jesus' name. My name is Boeing Adidiji. And you've been listening to Leader View. God bless you. I hope to connect with you again next week. Remain blessed. Be the perfect leader in an imperfect family. Be the perfect leader in an imperfect society. God bless you. Amen.